Good afternoon, everyone, and happy Thursday. My name is Melissa, and I'm here on behalf of Anita Good Design to do our stitch out of the day. Now, it is Thursday at 2, and we are normally live at this time, but we forgot we had a holiday party today. So our staff is having an awesome holiday celebration together just to enjoy each other's company and take a couple hours off of work so that we can enjoy the festive season together. So because of that, we went ahead and pre-recorded our stitch out today, but it's going up at two like we usually do. So I'm still excited if you hopped on and you're here to join me. I will be stitching a card today. So the collection that I wanted to feature is called Merry Mylar Cards. Now the card that I'm showing here is the one that I'm gonna be stitching for today's stitch out. So if you purchase the collection and you wanna stitch along with me, I'll be doing it in order as the tutorial does. And in the end result is this really cool holiday card that has this shiny feature to it. I have a bunch from the collection to show off, as well as some other stuff on paper and cardstock that we'll talk about shortly. But to go ahead and get started, I want to talk about the materials that we'll need and then I have the design loaded to the machine so we can get started as soon as I cover it all. So if you're new to embroidery on paper, we usually use cardstock or five by seven pre-made cards. This one is a five by seven card that has that fold already created in it. Um, and we just stuck with white for this collection, but remember you can use any color. You can use fun, shiny cardstock as well. Because we're stitching on a card and we're gonna have some satin stitching, if you saw that pretty snowflake, we'll need a base fabric on the card. Otherwise, those stitches are just gonna plow through the card and it's gonna disintegrate in front of you. So to prevent that, we're gonna use a base fabric and for this fun wintry collection, I picked this nice light blue. And then I have a selection of threads. These cards are so simple, y'all. This one only uses four colors, so, or five. I have the fifth one already on the machine. So very simple colorway. These are a perfect project to stitch and send out the door before the holiday season if you forgot something in the mail or if you just want to send a little winter greeting or even Christmas. We have all the different themes. So to stitch the card, if you're following along with me, we're going to go ahead and load the design to the machine using our USB stick. Now I am doing card number two if you're stitching in the Mary Mylar set and I went ahead and printed out my PDF instructions so that I have the step-by-steps in front of me. And if you're new to Mylar, we have some Mylar right here and I'll talk shortly about what that material actually is. But we're gonna go ahead and start the first step. So first step of the design for all our cards is to lower our needle and run a placement stitch. So what this is gonna do, and I picked a darker thread so you can see it on the stabilizer, is it's basically going to indicate where the front of our card is going to go. So we let that box finish and then we're going to grab our cardstock that I have here and because my card is one of the ones that opens and closes, it's very important that we pick the front of the card for the placement and we are going to lay it right inside the stitched box. Now it's going to tack it down, but I love to use our handy dandy embroidery tape. I get asked all the time, Melissa, what tape do you guys use? This is the r &K Embroidery Perfection Tape. So if you're looking for some of that, highly recommend. This will even hold a rolled up sweatshirt in place in the hoop. So this is very sticky, but it won't damage the card or your project. And it can stick to your machine if you're like me and like to reuse tape and it won't leave any residue. So just some insider tips if you're stitching along with me today. All right, so once we have the card taped down, we're gonna go ahead and run the tacking stitch. Now I know that I'm doing this nice light blue fabric and I had a dark thread here so that you all could see it, but I'm gonna go ahead and swap the color to be a match for my placement tack down. That way you don't see the tacking stitch being a strange color later. But just keeping it all consistent. If I can get the thread off, there we go. Run that through our machine. And now we're gonna go ahead and do the tacking step for securing the card in place. Now you don't have to use tape like I did here. If you're comfortable holding the card and making sure it doesn't slide, you can also do that. All 
All right, so once we run that step, that basically attacked the card. You'll notice it was one ply, so it wasn't really attacking Stitch. What it does is kind of secures the card to the tearaway. So if you missed what stabilizer I was using, I definitely forgot to say, but we're using tearaway. Anytime we do card stock. <clears throat> All right, so now that we have the card secured, I'm gonna take our base fabric and lay it pretty side facing up over the whole card. Now I have enough excess here that I'm just gonna hold it in place while it runs that tack down, but you can trim it to size and kind of hold it there, your preference. And I like to guide the fabric so that it has a nice, smooth, flat lay. And if you're watching this stitch out with me, you'll notice this one is a two-ply tack down that is going to secure the applique to the front of the card. And as soon as it's done tacking, we're going to use our scissors and trim away that excess fabric. There we go. And now we're going to go ahead and do our trimming. So I'll remove my hoop from the machine. Always cut on a flat surface, so I have the hoop laid down in front of me. And then I'm using a pair of curved tip scissors, if you're able to see those. That curved tip is perfect for trimming appliques and getting nice and tight to the line. Now if you're wondering why we chose cards this week, you may have seen your email or hopped onto the homepage of the website and notice we are running a sale. So I'm gonna throw this on the ground and we're gonna go ahead and get that candle wicking stitch started next and then I'll tell you all about that but we are running a promo right now for cards and embroidery on paper. So the next step after we've tacked our base fabric down is we are going to run the decorative candle wick stitching. So I'm gonna use a thread that matches my fabric and we're gonna go ahead and hit go on that. This step says it'll take about three minutes, so while that runs, we'll go ahead and give you some of the details about our sale. So we are running a special on embroidery on paper, and we also have a flash promo for today. So if you tuned in today and you're watching our stitch out, even though we're not live and it still went up at two, you get rewarded for watching and tuning in with us. So we're running a flash 15 sale. That's the promo code is flash 15 for 15% 15 off your entire order. Um, you'll enter that at checkout and then you can use that to save a little money for the holiday shopping season. And that sale is only good till midnight tonight. So be sure to use it. If you popped onto our video today or you're on our Facebook page, and you catch the video, be sure to use that code. Um, again, it's Flash 15. And then the reason we're stitching cards today is that I wanted to come up with a quick and easy holiday project that, like me, if you're a procrastinator when it comes to mailing things out for the holidays, I still have presents I need to mail and we're halfway through December, so I need to get on it. Um, but if you know you have family or relatives and cards don't take too long to ship, this is a perfect way to send something sweet and thoughtful, but also handmade in the mail. Um, and the Mylar is just a really fun extra touch. So I wanted to talk about that Mylar for a second. Now the cards that I'm stitching, we have this little snowflake is the one that we're doing. So I picked silver Mylar, but Mylar is like a metallic film filament kind of sheet. It's a craft Mylar. So if you're trying to find this online, um, we simply search for embroidery Mylar and it'll pop right up in packs or rolls of it. Um, we are advocates to always check with your local dealer or um, craft supply store before you go to Amazon, but if you can't find it near you or you live in the middle of nowhere, Amazon will be your friend. So Mylar, very shiny, very fun. If you've never played with it before in crafting, it is very similar to, let's think, candy wrappers. If we just had Halloween not too long ago, those little mini-sized candy bars, they have like a Mylar film around them, birthday balloons and helium balloons. So things like that use this material, and you can even use those actual materials as well. So if you can't buy it in craft sheets, you can actually take sheets of mylar from other things like birthday balloons. Um, fun fact for you if you are listening and watching while we stitch, when I used to teach events and we traveled, we had all those fun mylar balloons in one of my dealer's shops. 
and we were doing a mylar project and so we actually took one of the deflated balloons and cut it up and handed it out to everyone and we ended up using that in the project and I've also had ladies use the candy wrappers from the candy sitting on a table um, and our rule is as long as your needle can pass through it safely then you can stitch through it. So fun inside tip for you there. And now our candle wicking is finishing up so that worked out perfectly. And speaking of mylar, we get to do the fun part now. So now we're gonna do the placement tack down for our mylar material. Now, the secret to mylar is that it's very flimsy. So when you see me moving it, it's very thin. Actually, we have to run our placement stitch first. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm too excited. We're gonna go ahead and run the placement for our mylar, and it's just gonna be the center of that snowflake. So if you're on my camera right here by the machine, we're running the placement stitch for this area. And I know people always ask, what's the inside look like? We did not cover the bobbin stitches, but you can cover this with cardstock or more paper, but just so you get to see that. All right, so we have our placement stitch for the star, or snowflake, I should say. I could pre-cut this, but we're conserving mylar around here to make sure we have enough, so I'm just gonna lay it, let it do its thing. So we lay it nice and flat. We're gonna go ahead and run that tacking stitch step if you're like me, again, you can use your hands to kind of babysit it, but you don't want to pull or tug too much. The machine will kind of lay it the way it needs to. For the Mylar tack down, it will do a two-ply tacking stitch, but we have some important information regarding Mylar. If you do any of these other cards, so just so you can see a few more of them, we got a little deer, we got those holly leaves, a very pretty sled. The secret to mylar is that it is very thin and it will perforate itself. So what we're gonna do is not even trim like an applique and we're just gonna keep running the next step. So the next step in the design, I know you can't quite see the machine screen, but it is that grid overlay stitch that runs on top of the mylar. Now this is the secret to mylar working in cards is it has this overlay fill stitch that we're gonna go ahead and run and it lays like a little blanket over our mylar to help secure it in place. Now, if you've never done mylar before, you can't stick mylar in just any applique step because it will fall right out. It's so thin that the needle will perforate it and it'll end up falling out of your design. The point of this specialty stitch is that it'll help lay a little blanket over your mylar. It prevents any tears and pulling and also keeps a little sparkle happening. Now I'm using silver, so I have a blue thread. I actually forgot to change my thread. So we're gonna have a fun different snowflake. So normally I was talking to you about mylar and I didn't switch it, um, but you usually match the fill stitch and the satin to the color of your mylar. Now it works out that I forgot to change it because one of my bonus tips for you is that unlike these colors, so here I have a red sleigh with red mylar and we use red thread. If you use silver and then pick a colored thread over top, it can actually shine the color back at you and give a little fun effect to it, make the color kind of stand out. So in the original card, we did it silver on silver, but I'm running that light blue still. So we're gonna keep the fill stitch, that fun light blue, and then I'll switch to the silver for my satin. And maybe my snowflake will look a little more blue than this one. So just more tips for you guys, tips and tricks for making things entirely your own. So now that we ran that fill stitch, I mentioned again how we didn't trim the mylar. So I'm actually still not gonna trim. What we're gonna do is just change our thread. And I know some people must be watching this and are like, what is she talking about? You don't trim and you're about to run the satin. But that is correct because when we run that satin stitch, it's going to end up perforating the mylar for you. And you literally don't need scissors to trim it. So this is not even joking, one of the easiest projects. You can have kids participate in making cards and have a good old time making a bunch of them. All right, so now that I have my silver thread in there, we did do that fill stitch in a light blue. And instead of trimming, we're just gonna hit go and let that satin stitch run. And the end goal basically is that once it stitches this nice thick satin and it has a little bit of details in the center of the snowflake, anywhere that there's a satin stitch on the outside edge, it's going to just cleanly tear away from that when we're done. So very cool, kind of fun to try that. And you can always clean it up if you're not satisfied with it. 
Now we show more than one way, depending which card collection you're in. So sometimes we say to trim after the fill stitch, but I wanted to show you guys just how easy these can be. You really don't need to do much and it will just trim itself. Again, I know we missed our live, so I wanted to make sure I tell you guys if you're tuning in to watch the stitch out with me doing this really cute Mylar card. We're doing the Mary Mylar collection. This one recently dropped, I want to say October, September, so just not too long ago before the holidays. Um, and there's so many cute designs in it. I'm stitching the Let It Snow, but just so you can see some of the others, we have Oh What Fun with Santa's sleigh. We have Holly Jolly with the really cute holly leaves. I love the little gold reindeer. So it's a reindeer, but then not only is his mylar gold, we did the satin stitch in metallic gold. So he's just so fun and sparkly. So tis the season. Uh, the Christmas trees is really cute, merry and bright. I feel very on brand. I'm wearing green pants and a red sweater because I've got a holiday party. So I'm in the festive spirit today. We have a very simple ornament if you're just looking for something without any of the words on it. This adorable little bear, which we've made him silver, so I think he's a polar bear, but have at it at home. You can make him brown with <laughs> brown mylar. Mylar comes in every color, y'all. Not kidding. And then we have warm wishes with that really pretty candle. So that is the collection that I'm stitching right now. But I also wanted to tell you guys about some other awesome things in the cardstock sale. So we are doing a flash sale today. Flash 15 is the code. You'll get 15% off your order. And that's for today only. But for the cards, we are doing this sale until the 16th, which is Saturday. So you can shop any of the collections I'm about to show you at 35% off. I want to make sure I had that right. 35% off for the embroidery on paper uh, technique. So if you click the homepage banner or in the emails, it will take you directly to that page. But if you're on our website and trying to figure out how to get there yourself, you simply go to shop all designs and then there's filter technique. So you can go under technique and do embroidery on paper. And we have about 20 something or so collections on there that are part of this sale. So lots of really cute ones. We're finishing that outside of the snowflake right now. So if you're watching, you can kind of see it's going around the outside. All right, and some other really cute cards I wanted to feature. So we are doing, this card collection has that base fabric and the mylar in it. But if you're tuning in and you wanna know some of the other stuff that's included in the sale, we have our um, seasonal hand-stitched cards. These are super cute. And because they are hand-stitched, which is a lighter stitch density, you actually don't need a base fabric. So I'm gonna flip through some of these. We have a really cute one for Hanukkah, which I know is currently ongoing. Um, we have, again, they are seasonal, so any season. We have birthday, like a little cupcake, a celebration present. And now I want to show you guys with the phone camera, just because we're live doesn't mean I can't show you these details. But the cards have that really cool hand-stitched effect to them. And because the holes are perforated farther apart, it's not going to make the card fall apart. So if you can see the inside, there's our bobbin stitching. Again, you can cover the inside of your card with cardstock or printed pattern paper. We have things like thank you with the cute little doggy. Very pretty. It's mom for Mother's Day. Some hearts that are good for Valentine's Day or really any occasion. Another cute love, anniversary, wedding. Anniversary. I said anniversary. Uh, Valentine's Day, so again, Christmas. He's so cute with his little swirly beard. And again, we did it in polyester, Floriani. And then his beard is metallic, but you could totally do the whole thing in metallics or shiny hologram threads, that'd be fun. Again, another cute Mother's Day or celebration one. We even got cards for dad in here, best dad ever. So very cute. I love that. This makes me think of a basketball for some reason. Very cute orange. So just wanted to show you a peek of those. So those are the seasonal hand-stitched cards. 
And then real quick while it finishes that satin. We've mentioned these a few times on live, but I'd never get sick of them. If Christmas is around the corner, which it really is, and you need some last minute things, this is a fun family project to do for the tree. Let's say grandkids are coming over, you break out the embroidery machine, you could stitch some of these with them. All it requires is cardstock, tearaway stabilizer, and a thread that you like. And then of course you can little hole punch at the top with some string. We used embroidery floss, so we didn't even buy fancy string. We just used some of that little twine string that we got. So lots of different ones. Again, I'm gonna show you some detail on this one. These came in different styles. So we have ones that are plain stitched on the base cardstock, and then we have some that had like an applique circle as well. So you can kind of see the two styles there. And notice that all the motifs on them are different. So they aren't just the same pattern. They get different motifs. Very cute. So very pretty. Again, we kept them kind of simple to show off the stitching, but you could pick a fun metallic cardstock and a flat thread, like black on gold would be really classy. Very fun. And if you heard my machine go just now, it was buzzing really fast because it just finished that satin stitch. It's got, oh, I lied to you. It's got one section of the star left. We have like a little V left in the design right there for its stitch. Um, if you're hopping onto my live and want to, or sorry, hopping onto the video at any point and want to know, it is Mary Mylar cards is the one that I'm stitching. And I have several other cards just to show off today. But again, we have that card stock and our base fabric and then our silver Mylar. There we go. <laughs> so now it's finishing. So now I get to show you the wonder of this Mylar step. Oh, I keep thinking it's done and I lie to you. It's got a center circle to do. We'll watch it do its beat instead. So we got little rays radiating out from a center circle here and it's just finishing up those. There we go. All right, so now I can show you this really cool mylar removal and how that satin stitch basically did all the work for us. So if I hold up my hoop, is that clear, Haley? Can they see the center in there? Perfect, I wanna make sure you guys can see it in frame. So notice I did not trim anything when we laid that initial mylar placement tack down. So now I literally just pull at it, you guys, and it comes right off. No messing with scissors if your hands have difficulty with trimming things, especially with all the little cuts into the design. It comes away nice and easy. I'm gonna do some minor cleanup in the tiny inside points here, just where the mylar got stuck. There we go. But again, that satin stitch does the trick for you, takes out the trimming, and I'm just kind of poking at any leftover spots that needed to be cleaned up. So I'll give you a quick glance at that. Look at that, so cute. Didn't require any long excessive trimming of that applique. And you can't even tell, but the light blue is what the fill stitch is and it's shining back like the card color. So very nice effect there. I'm gonna slide my hoop back in the machine and then we're changing out threads to be our snowflake color, which I'm gonna do this nice teal that I have over here. So our card is like a light aqua blue. I'm gonna use this really cool teal color, P52, if you're curious. <laughs> I'm using the same colors that are in the tutorial, so if you end up liking the colorway we stitched it in, we did list the Floriani's in the PDF. So you can copy it, or you can get creative and do it entirely your own. So we're gonna go ahead, and we got three minutes on this step. This is our embroidery for the little stars and snowflakes around it. doing cards and cardstock and embroidery on paper. While that's running my little snowflakes all over, I wanted to show a couple other collections just to get you in the card or cardstock thought process of what you can make. Um, we do have a lot of cards here since that's it's the holidays. I picked cards and pulled some, so quick and easy ideas to stitch and send out. 
Um, this one is actually an Anita's Express. This is our Mylar Christmas cards. So similar to how we're doing the Holly Jolly cards, or Mary Mylar, I said Holly Jolly. We have that too, a Holly Jolly collection. Um, Mary Mylar, and then this one's Mylar Christmas cards. So either way, you'll find both of those under the card stock sale or embroidery on paper. Um, and these have just different designs to them. We have this really cute nutcracker. And on all of these, from um, the silver versions at least, we use like a silver linen. So very pretty. This one says, uh, Jingle All The Way. I'm sure from there it's harder to read. But cute little silver and gold bell. And then we got Santa. Very cute. I love that one with his little silver beard. He says the beard has to be white. Um, but fun fact, they make opalescent colored mylar. So if you don't love the super mirror ball shiny look, they make those really pretty... Um, almost magical looking colors. So you can always do something more like opal themed too. So again, that one is our Anita's Express. Um, by the way, if you're new or haven't heard of our Anita's Express line, those are discontinued now, but we still um, sell them online. We just don't make any more new ones. But we have over, like I think just around 100 different types of Anita's Express collections. This was one of them. And the concept is they finish in 45 to 90 minutes, so a nice, quick and easy project that you can kind of get some practice doing the technique with, um, but not having to commit to something all day to stitch. So another great one. In my opinion, all our cards are like an express project because even this one takes just under an hour. If you're sitting chatting, let's say you're drinking your coffee or tea while you're doing your embroidery, it really can be a whole relaxing situation. So we're working on those little snowflakes. You can kind of check in there. All right, so our snowflake step just finished ran through that one, it was just embroidery. So now we're gonna go ahead and switch our thread. And the remaining parts of the design are very simple. We have the words left, and then I think one additional like little snowflake detail. All right, so we've got my pink is what I'm gonna use. This is 125, nice bright pink. It's one of my favorite shades. Makes me think Barbie pink. Very cute. It's the year of Barbie, you guys. We have to love pink, right? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and embroider. This one's about two minutes of Let It Snow. And this is the Let It part. So while that one's running the embroidery for the words, I have like two more card collections I can show off while we're waiting for the embroidery to finish. So the one that I grabbed here is our folk Christmas cards. Now this was a really pretty collection that again uses a base fabric and has applique in it. But the reason I liked it and wanted to show it off is that it comes with two different size files. So instead of the traditional five by seven, you can also do, I believe this was five by five, yeah, five by five size. Um, and if you don't have five by five cardstock, you simply take a five by seven and chop the inches off and make it five by five. So you can do this yourself and have like different sizes. Um, you can also display them or mail them out around the holidays. You can do them as place cards too. They don't have to just be for mailing y'all. Um, I wanted to show these though. We did use a cardstock that has this cool like raw edge to it. So I don't want you to think that's a tear that is intentional on these cards. Um, but it gave them like a rustic look. Uh, very pretty with pops of metallic, but we did a nice colorway of like pale blues, of course Christmas red, um, but we have no greens in this card collection. So this was a fun way to show that you can do different holidays or seasons in alternative colorways. And I think this one might be one of my favorites out of the rectangle set in there. So Merry Christmas, very pretty with that silver embroidery. And I do love the little Noel, the square one. We have some more that I'll show you guys up close so you can kind of see that stitch detail. Let me lay them out for you. So we do have the Noel that I showed. You can kind of see, let's see if I can get it to focus. There we go. There's that candle licking stitch. 
case anyone wanted to see that a little bit more detailed. That is what secures the fabric to the edge of the part and prevents it from falling apart. So very cool. Such pretty embroidery on it for it being still cardstock. And this one actually, I'm trying to hold it with one hand, opens upright. So you can kind of prop it up on a table or up there. Um, we have Happy Holidays. Very cute little house. Birds. Joy. So many pretty ones. So lots of different styles there for you. And now we have the last set of words, or words is just one word, and it is snow. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap out my thread, pull in that purpley color. Now, just because we're not live doesn't mean we're not checking. So if you guys are watching and in the comment section, let us know what you're stitching for the holidays. If you have any last minute gifts you're sending out this year, what you've made this year, if you're stitching things for people, mail in or sorry, email in or send us your pictures on social media so we can share them. So the last word is snow. I have my color in here. I'm using 135 if you wanna know, Floriani. And we're gonna go ahead and hit the embroidery button for that step. It claims there's one step after this and I don't see which one it is. Let's see, large snowflake outline stitch. Ah, that's what it is, I forgot. We have this final outline stitch to run as well. So I'm finishing the word snow here and then the last step's gonna be that little bean stitch that kind of emphasizes our pretty snowflake. So again, if you popped on today, um, oop, check and re-thread the upper. Mm-hmm, that happens to everyone, right? So if we have that happen, we just re-thread our thread still. By re-threading. And then pro tip, I love being able to show you guys that this happens to people at Anita too. We're just gonna navigate in our machine and go back about 10 stitches or so. I like to do about 20 on a satin just to make sure it catches the edge again. Um, but I backed it up a little bit, I lower my needle, and we're gonna try that again, see if that does a better job. Let's wait and see and hold out if the S finishes fine. There we go, I think that's doing better. Just had a spot in the thread, it was being picky. All right, so because we were finishing up with the card, I wanted to make sure that if you tuned in today, uh, reminder, we didn't get to go live, but it was recorded today, so I still stitched this out today, and you're still tuning in. Um, but we had a holiday party at Anita, so you might see some pics on our social media later of us just celebrating the holiday season together here at the office. Um, and then we're getting right back to embroidery the next day. So uh, because of that, we're running a sale on the embroidery on paper cardstock stuff on our website. That whole technique is on sale now until Saturday at midnight. So we are doing 35% off embroidery on paper. And if you tuned in today to watch the stitch out and stitch along with me or save and come back to it later, you get rewarded as well. So for today only, we're doing a flash promo of Flash 15 for 15% 15 off your entire order. So use that at checkout, save some money for the holidays, and be sure to have fun shopping for some projects. Whether that's for you or for your uh, friend, you get to decide. Sometimes the deals are so good you shop for yourself. So we're finishing up the last bit of the snow here. We can watch that stitch, it's so cute. I love seeing the lettering finish up. That's some of the most satisfying parts of the design to watch is the lettering. All right, we finished our lettering. So now we're gonna go ahead and change to our last thread. Our final thread color is, oop, I have to pull from the top because it got lost out of the needle. All right, so we're gonna use this nice teal, just like all the other snowflakes, to kind of outline around our big snowflake. And then we will finish it up and I'll show you how to trim it out and be done with it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and run that last step and then I'll meet you back for the finish. Perfect, okay, so our outline just finished on the snowflake, which was our last machine step. Our machine let us know it's done. All right, a little thread, just gonna trim right there. That was where our thread broke, so I do have a tiny fuzzy on that letter S, but that's on me. 
All right, so to finish off the card and remove it, there is our finished design. So again, if you remember, I said I ran the wrong thread in the center fill. I ended up keeping this light blue color instead of making it silver. And I really don't think you can tell at all. So super cool that it kind of hid that with the silver shiny. It kind of shines the colors back at us. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the stabilizer and project from the hoop. And then to finish off our cards, um, again, I mentioned you guys can put cardstock or glue other fabric papers or even like a printed picture. No one ever talks about um, printed fabric much, but when we do use it, you can print out photos of family or loved ones. You could totally hot glue a printed fabric photo of someone on the inside of your holiday card. So I'm taking my scissors, trying to do it at a way that you can actually see. But um, I'm basically trimming up to that candle wicking stitch line with the scissors. So you could tear like that, but I'm also just wanting to make sure I get it nice and close so there's no excess ragged edge. So beauty of tear away is you can tear it. So there, that edge got nice and pulled close. There we go. Pull the top off. And always be delicate, you guys. I know we get excited at the end of the project and you're like, let me just rip it off. But I'm taking my time, trimming away any excess with those scissors. And then as a reminder, you can cover up these bobbin stitches with construction paper, pattern scrapbook paper, glitter vinyl, you name it. But there is the finished front of the card. So I hope you guys enjoyed learning how to stitch out one of our Mary Mylar cards with me. Reminder that this collection is included in our embroidery on paper sale. That's 35% off the technique for embroidery on paper running now till Saturday night. Um, so be sure to shop any cards, paper ornaments. Um, our special edition that's $99 stitching on stationery, that's also included in the sale. So don't miss out. That one has all occasions and seasons. And then just for tuning in, of course, we're doing a flash promo. Um, you get 15% off your whole order with Flash 15 at checkout. So I hope you guys enjoyed learning how to stitch a Mylar card with me and those tips and tricks I gave you all. And happy holidays.